Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Ryan with Iowa Classic Cars. It's a beautiful, cold November morning. The clocks are rolled back. I'm gonna be driving all day today to Western Nebraska to pick up a 1964 Impala four-door sedan. I picked up this car here um, a day and a half ago and I decided, you know what? It's cold enough and the sun stays up or short enough in the day, let's go get another one. Let's uh, drive all day through the dark and you'll get a beautiful four-door sedan. So anyways, guys, got my khakis on, the truck's warming up, let's get rolling. All right, everyone, so five seconds later on the video, four hours of driving, we are here picking up uh, this 1964 Impala four-door sedan. A real nice, solid car, honestly, for what it is. It's like I, like I said, if you want to buy a solid car, Western Nebraska, Colorado, Kansas. It's all the good places to, to pick them up. This car's got a padded dash as well as factory AC, which is kind of a, a rare option. And my buddy Roy, he actually watches my videos and he sees me struggling with uh, engines, so he built me this. So I really appreciate that. Turn the, uh, turn the engines a little more efficiently now. So green on green, 283 automatic it's a two barrel <coughs> he's uh can you grab the the hood for me yeah. roy's pretty mechan mechanically inclined and he's had it soaking for at least what a month and a half oh better than that probably by now she's stuck real tight but it is cool that it's all kind of there and unmolested and complete the ac stuff on the firewall the compressor even the tag on the GM two barrel. So yeah, pretty cool car. Let's uh, let's get it loaded and then we'll walk around Roy's yard here and kind of look at some of his cars. Oh yeah, doesn't get any better than that. Well, I guess it could be a little better right there, but... Find one that doesn't. I know, yep. 61 through 64, very, very common to rust right there. Just a, a bad design by GM. But yeah, it's uh, pretty clean and sanitary otherwise. So anyways, let's get her loaded. All right, everyone, so uh, this gem is all loaded. Having that lawnmower to push it was way too easy. But let's uh, let's look at Roy's collection here. He's got quite a few old cars and a lot of cool old stuff. So let's, uh, let's start meandering down, the, down the, the line here. So this is Roy's personal uh, 59. He's had this since, what, high school? Pre-high school. Pre-high school. So he's had it a couple years. It's got a 454 in it now. Will it start? It did last week, but not today. But still, it's a it's a real cool two door sedan. It's got side dump exhaust, and it's not too often you find a guy that keeps a car. For a majority of his life. You care if I open the door? No. It's got uh, newer style bucket seats. Nice uh, original back seat. Beautiful gold color dash. The floors are pretty nice. They've been patched a little bit, but I mean, you know, for being an original car, it's not too bad. Now that's definitely not stock. <laughs> 454, modern charging system, 
dual reservoir master cylinder, disc brakes, disc brakes aluminum radiator. We're going to see if we can get her to fire up here. All right, take two with a good battery. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was easy. Just needed a good battery. There she is. She's alive. Four door sedan. Now, what year are these, Roy? This kind of pinkish looking one is a 60. And that's the first year, right? It's 1960? Yeah, I believe that, one's a, that one is a 60. I believe this is a 62. So the first generation of them. Oh, yes. Yep. Oh, yes. And sitting next to that is a beautiful green patina, 59 Bel Air. God, I love I love green on on these old cars. Now, is this one mainly just a parts car for you? Yes, it's so weak anymore. It got stopped. They stopped driving it because the seat fell through the floor. Yeah, that's a good reason to stop driving it. So this is a pretty cool one here. Now, Roy, your dad bought this car in 1964 right I believe so yes and it's been the family ever since we traded a 50 Chevrolet coupe in for it traded a 50 Chevy now you know what that's a pretty damn good trade in my opinion <laughs> it's all original what's uh 283 in it this one's got a 327 and a 350 transmission so it's been it's been upgraded but the paint's original it's a grocery getter Yeah, newer, newer style motor, newer style transmission. Did she leak a little oil? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Burns a little oil, leaks a little oil, but you know what? At least it's got oil. It's going down the road. Yep, exactly. Now this one's a family car, and so is this '62 here, correct? Yes. And that's your. This is your girlfriend's dad's, dad's car. Which you know what? Having one family car is cool enough, but having two. <laughs> And it's got bucket seats. Out of a Corvair. Corvair bucket seats. Which are the same as this body's. The full size. Bucket seats. Just the tracks are different. Again, real clean patina survivor. There we go. Inline six. That's cool. Four speed. Four speed on the floor? Yep. Man, what a hell of a cool car. What's the visor off of? That is an aftermarket one that would have been on a 40s something. Okay, so it's it's obviously not a period correct piece. No, it's a, like a Fulton or something. Yep. Okay, let's keep walking down the line here. Now this 59 here, I've been, I've been harassing Roy to sell it to me forever. It's an awesome car. Other than the fact it's a 59 El Camino, it's a factory 348 car, original grill guard. It's got an awesome patina to it, but let's look under the hood and see what it, what is so cool about this car. Oh yeah, three twos, baby, it's a tri-power. Now, the story with this car is you can't verify it's a tri-power car, but everything... Everything lines up. The date code on the intake, the date code on the carburetor tags were... The uh, coil on the firewall there, that's a 348 tri-power only thing. So you don't know for certain, but it, it points to it being a true. Yes, when I got it, the engine had been replaced with a four barrel, three, uh, four barrel 348, but the man kept intake up from the original intake, uh, original engine. So, I mean, to me, it sounds like it's an original car, but I mean, yeah, you would never be able to know for sure. So but the, the stampings on the block are a are, four barrel. Okay. Top part is, is gotcha and yeah it's just got an awesome patina to it but sitting next to it another beautiful johnny cash special 59 right here and this is gonna be a drag car right hopefully i love you cannot beat a 59 chevrolet i mean just what are the, one of the coolest cars ever built and if you're gonna build a, a drag car put a lot of power behind them you have to have the sedan and uh, strength in it. Two doors look a little better than four doors if you're going to be uh, building a race car. Here's an El Camino. And this is a parts car for the other one, correct? And as you can see, she's uh, 
She was pretty well picked before I got it, but I couldn't let it go to the iron. Yep, you let it uh, let it live in our life here and donate some parts instead of uh, being cut up. And this one actually came with the white El Camino. Now, is this one also part Scarforia yeah. or? I suppose an ambitious person could save it. Could be saved, but it's almost, yeah, it's, the floors really aren't that, well, the floors are pretty, pretty out of the thing. But it could be fixed. They're getting harder and harder to find every day, that's for sure. Two-tone car. Now this wagon here is also a two-tone. So this is red and white. This car originally was red and white. So they, they're kind of twins in that regard. Yeah. <laughs> now this one is um, your girlfriend's car, correct? Yes. God, you just cannot beat a 59 long roof. <laughs> All right, what else you got here for 59s? The, to the end of the drive there. Really. Everyone, Roy likes these cars almost as much as I do. But you know what? He's been doing it a whole lot longer. So I give I give him the uh, the 59 Achievement Award. Ryan's been doing a better job of it than <laughs> I have, though. <laughs> this is a Biscayne. Yep, four-door Biscayne. This parts car for you. Oh, yeah. Factory black, though. You can't beat it. Bought it in an auction. You know what? Let's look at this Kaiser here. And this this one is this one's cool. I'm not typically a Kaiser guy. They're just so goofy looking. But the cool thing with this car is it's a what year? 1947. It's a 47 Kaiser. The last plate on it was 1954. Mm -hmm. Can you show us what's so cool about this car here, Roy? It's got the Fulton uh, visor and the, the shades. Came with the original key. Original key and check this out. Been sitting since 1954, and well, it did fire up, and it runs. It does. It runs like a top. It's very cold out here today. Like an old sewing machine. I can't imagine someone parking this after eight years and just leaving it. But it's a pretty, pretty neat old car, and this one is for sale. So if you guys are interested, um, email me. My email's in the uh, description. And if you're serious, I will get you in contact with Roy. Um, however, to protect his privacy right now, I'm not gonna go into anything else. So email me if you're interested. Another one that I wanna buy real bad. Oh, beautiful patina blue two-door Bel Air. The colors back in the 50s and early 60s, <laughs> you'll just never have a better assortment. Today everything's gray and black and red and you don't get these bright, pretty colors of of the 50s and 60s. Old uh, figure, eight. figure eight car. Probably can't be fixing that one up. It ain't broke. It ain't broke, don't fix it. Throw battery ain't fired up. Now here's another two-door sedan. This is a, uh, I, what, is this like a gray or is this like a, a midnight like a midnight blue this or would like have a, been a blue this this would have been a blue if you look in the jams it's blue yeah i guess we have a little bit of original paint here left yeah the original paint blue on blue really you know pretty solid for what it is but it's just missing so much and then a real pretty that is a pretty blue dark blue four-door sedan and yeah it needs uh it needs some floors it's got a little bit of weight reduction but you could definitely put an ls motor in this one and and really fool some people this one's got the, the v8 in it as it is now does this one run currently or no, no? no. she's stuck she's stuck well roy i appreciate you showing me all these cars here I but uh coming and looking. it's time to get back to iowa before uh before it gets dark and we have about a four four and a half hour ride so I appreciate you letting me come out here, and uh, guys, let's get back to Iowa. I got home after dark and forgot to say this, but uh, car rolled real easy off the trailer. But now that we are home, um, one of the unfortunate things about where I live is it gets very cold and snowy and kind of miserable to work on cars. So I need my garage back for my daily drivers to keep them inside out of the uh, out of the elements. So let's uh, 
let's go put the convertible from move, move it from my house to my storage shed for the uh, the winter and then get the cars cleaned up the 59 Impala hardtop and my 81 Camaro and get them cleaned up and uh, tucked away for the winter so this is done let's move on to putting them away well winter time means one thing this old girl you probably remember for a couple months ago the 348 tri-power four-speed rag uh, I've kept it here at the house for the summer but got to put the, uh, the daily drivers inside so this car is going to storage for the winter and uh, the 60 convertible was in its spot but now that, that car is gone it's time to time to put her away before the, before the snow flies so it's a sad day but at least it'll be inside all right guys so the convertible is uh, put away the truck now is in its spot um, for the winter keep the daily driver inside one of the last things I do every every car season um, in addition to running stable through the gas tank to kind of keep the fuel fresh um, and disconnecting the positive on the battery I've seen a lot of bad things happen when you actually leave um, your batteries hooked up you know they go dead for one um, a faulty headlight switch could burn the car up I've seen a lot of that happen before more than I want to so I just disconnect them it's cheap insurance but I also wash and wax my cars now I do this twice a year typically April May June somewhere in that at the beginning of the cruising season and then once again at the very you know kind of finale of the season so I use uh, York's wax Lance is actually a friend of mine he sent me this not too long ago and I wanted to put it in a video but never really had the time to do that uh, now that we're actually cleaning the cars and gonna be actually using this stuff today uh, I thought it's the perfect time to do that so I like this wax because it's the highest concentration of carnauba wax um, it's just a lot cleaner product it's all natural it's not filled with chemicals so it doesn't agitate my skin as I apply the wax and if your car is dusty like this you don't keep it in a you know climate controlled building or under a tarp all the time um, it does get dusty it does get dirty it does get driven so uh, the cool thing about this is if you guys want to actually just kind of wash and wax your car at the same time the spray of wax is a two-in-one uh, solution for that simply spray it on uh, I talked to Lance about this to make sure it was right because at the time like that is way too easy so yeah he said spray it on wipe it off and it'll wash your car as well as leave a glossy waxy finish if you want to apply it by hand and you know kind of do like a traditional wax they do have a buttercream wax um, again all natural highest concentration of carnauba wax in the industry you simply um, wipe it on let it dry wipe it off and you're good to go so I'm gonna do that here tonight I'm not gonna film that because that's pretty boring to watch you guys all know how to wax a car but if you want to check it out, I will leave a, a link in the description to Orx's website. So Lance, thank you for sending me this, and check them out guys if you're interested. Well everybody, that's the end of today's video. Uh, these cars are both heading to Sweden to a single customer of mine. Um, got them loaded here full of parts. Got some gas tanks, some radiators, and the 64 here. And the 62 has got some brake parts and a bunch of floor pans. So say what you want about guys in other countries, they are fixing American iron and I think it's awesome that they're doing it. So if you just enjoyed the video, leave a like rating, uh, leave any comments, questions, concerns down in the comment section below. And if you're brand new to the channel, make sure to subscribe as you'll always see my old classic uh, GM rescues and Will It Runs. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Ryan with Iowa Classic Cars and I'll catch you in the next video.